hello welcome to my channel my name is Chidi um, I'm a first year fashion marketing student and today I'm going to be talking about my consumer behavior specifically when it comes to buying beauty products I'm going to be talking about foundation today and how I go through the decision making process to yeah choose which product to buy so. so today I'm talking about foundation and this is a type of beauty product that you use like at the start of your makeup It's basically the base layer. It evens out your skin and it creates like a blank canvas for you to work on I tend to use a bottle of foundation for two years maybe So yeah, it's an infrequent buy for me and it also Means that I have quite a large commitment to it The process of my buying a new foundation falls under the limited problem solving category According to Richardson, Kelly and James in 2015, this is defi defined by three factors. One, it being an infrequent buy. So yeah, so consumers don't have as much experience when buying this product. The second factor being it has a limited risk, longer commitment. So there's a process that consumers go through before acquiring a product. It's called a decision making process. And according to Gosney and Richardson in 2011, there's six distinct stages. The first one being problem recognition. Um, I realised my problem last night when I discovered that I didn't have any foundation left. So obviously I was going to have to go out and buy it. So I usually begin my information search online. I would start off with YouTube vloggers because it's like you can get a review, you can see what the product looks like on and you can, yeah, it's all very transparent and very honest. So... Getting information in this way from YouTube vloggers is called online word of mouth. According to Phelps et al 2004, online word of mouth is very persuasive because of its one to many reach and its lack of face to face pressures. And this is the case with me, like I don't like to go into a shop and have loads of shop assistants, you know, pressuring me and telling me which product to buy. My information continues looking at Instagram, Twitter and sometimes Snapchat. Um, I tend to have celebrities on there. These celebrities, popular on social media, are therefore in my aspirant group. It's been said that people can be inspired and motivated to buy products because of members in their aspirant group. Lockwood and Kunda in 1990. And I can attest to that because I will more likely look at Giorgio Armani because it's been tried and tested and also endorsed by Kim Kardashian and Kendall Jenner. Whereas products like Primark or Superdrug's own, I probably wouldn't look at because celebrity endorsements are a good tool to use if there is a matchup between the celebrity and the endorsement. Tilt and Bustler 1998 said this is particularly significant if the celebrity is attractive and the product that you are buying is used to enhance your attractiveness. And basically that's the whole point of makeup and foundation, you just want to look better. So if I see a celebrity like Rihanna endorsing a product, then being of that point of attractiveness, I would also want to buy this product because it makes sense. So the next step I'm going to talk about is information evaluation. So there's a few criteria that my product has to fit for me to want to buy it. These are called cutoffs. Examples of these cutoffs are price, distance, and usability. So in terms of price, if a product for me is between five pounds, maybe the minimum, and 40 pounds maximum, yes, I want to get that product. So I've looked at loads of different brands, um, Tom Ford, Estee Lauder, Fenty, Maybelline, and I've weighed up the negatives and positives of each of these products. So now I'm at the fourth stage of the process. This is the purchase decision stage. I have selected the product that fits me best, the most budget friendly option, and the one that's within my cutoff for distance is Maybelline Fit Me Foundation. There's also the added factor that I've bought it before and I've liked it. According to Jespin in 2006, prior information plays a massive part in why anyone buys a product. So the fifth stage of the decision making process is purchase decision slash behavior. So what I'm gonna do as a result of choosing my product. And so yeah, I went to buy it. So lastly, the sixth stage is called post purchase evaluation. This is where after you buy the product, you kind of go back and look at, you know, was it the right choice? Would you buy it again? And I think I would buy it again because after buying this product, I'm experiencing a lot of cognitive consonants. According to Bly Fatale, it's where the product overachieves and is better than what I expected. So yeah, basically this is me wearing the product now. And as you can see, like my skin is evened out. I'm gonna even zoom in. 
yeah um i've had such a good experience buying it i reckon that will be fed back into my memory and probably the next time i think about buying a foundation this internal information will play a big part in the information search so that is my buyer behavior when it comes to foundation